Hi, I'm Taji Mala. I work for Germany's Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, and we're here in Cape Town, South Africa, which is dealing with a massive and serious water crisis. So what does that mean in terms of daily practice? Cape Town residents have been told not to use more than 50 liters of water a day. And that sounds like a lot to you. It's literally no more than the water you use in a short shower of four to five minutes. So the water you use in your short morning shower is now literally all you have for the entire day. That means, of course, no car washing, no watering of gardens or plants. Uh, in terms of daily bathroom routine, if it's yellow, let it mellow. And well, here is also if it's brown, let it mellow. Exactly. And for showering, you step in into two buckets because the whole idea is that no fresh water goes down the drain. You quickly turn on the water to wet yourself, then you turn it off. You soap yourself, quickly turn the water on again to rinse yourself off. And again, all the water goes into buckets and is used for something else. The same is true for toothbrushing or face washing. Hand washing is any way out, and we're now in most bathrooms seeing hand sanitizers because that's how serious it is. Cape Town authorities are threatening to fine residents who exceed the daily usage allowance up to 10,000 rand. It's interesting because it suddenly occurred to me when this whole crisis started that we were flushing fresh water that was completely unused down our toilets. And I spoke to a girl from Kenya and she was saying to me, I heard in your country you use fresh water for your toilets. And she started laughing. <laughs> I was like, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, we do do that. That makes no sense at all. We need water and yet we use that to flush away waste. So that's a good point. Why is the grey water system not plugged into the, the toilet system already? I think we've got a massive Western problem of just consumerism. So we think of water as an, a never-ending resource, but obviously it's not. So for, I think, a lot of Cape Tonians, this has been a wake-up call about just the fact that this is a limited resource and that we have to actually be a lot more wise and, and careful with it. A lot of the blame made by politicians is to, to the public, yeah. saying that they're wasteful of resources. South Africa is a very dry country. At the best of times, we should be saving water, and we don't. So it's a learning curve for people to, to, to be restricted as they are in Cape Town at the moment. Last week our water was cut off by 11 a.m. So we've been forced to go to the Newland Spring uh -huh. to get water. I think it's really about an intersection of politics and environment. Mm. There has been a lot of planning for trying to increase the supply of water in the city of Cape Town. but it intersects very closely with the climate and what has happened in the climate. Last year in 2017, we had a third year of below normal rainfall that was unprecedented and this is really a sign of things to come. So I think it's not really about the city not having planned. There were a lot of plans in place and if it had rained last year like it has before, things would have been okay. But this crux of coming together of politics and environment is really what's landed us in this place. The, the solutions that are at hand are kind of engineering solutions, such as desalination plants, which haven't yet been built, uh, piping water in from other water basins, trying to look at underground water supply and manage that very carefully, but there is sufficient underground water in this region to, to help resolve the problem. It's hard to attribute specific events to climate change and an increase in global uh, greenhouse gas emissions, but an increase in extreme events like droughts is what we are expecting from climate change. But the reality is, this is the future. For us, it's a, it's a, it's a shame uh, for a city to say it's a water crisis. Yeah. Because most of us, in, especially in the black townships, we get a lot of people that must fetch water uh, 15 k's away from their houses. We've been living in the day zero for, for many years, you see. There are areas that people live a week without the water. They must buy water, you see. It's a, it's a big crisis, it's a crisis. I don't know how we're going to survive because I need water at home desperately because my mom, actually she's on the age where she wets herself, I must wash her thrice, and then how am I going to survive? How has this water crisis in Cape Town affected you as tourists here? We got like 50 liters that we can use. Uh, there's per also day, per, per day, per capita. There's also like water, in the shop that we can buy. We definitely don't use yeah. as much water as, as in back home. at home. Yeah. 
it's very much worrying because we also rely on the tourists coming in and all that. How can we provide them with good quality hospitality and also good food when all of this is happening? The main consumer of, of water in this country is commercial agriculture. Although um, in the city of Cape Town there's not much commercial agriculture. Yeah. So the restrictions are not really geared to restrict the agricultural community, uh, although that could happen in future. So does that, does that mean that in the future I will not be able to drink tasty South African red wines when I go to my local you shop? You probably will continue to consume South African wines, but the question is will South, the South African people be able to consume water out of taps? Cape Town is facing an unprecedented socio-ecological crisis. Never before in the history of the modern world has a whole city of this kind threatened to run out of water for its citizens completely. Now, what's so special about this crisis? I mean, there are ecological crises around the world all the time. But normally, it's the rich who cause the crisis and the poor who suffer. In this case, it's not just the poor who are suffering, it's also the rich who are suffering who will have to change their behavior. So, maybe you could consider this a note from your future. What's happening in Cape Town now might soon happen to all of us in relationship to water, to energy, to air. We need to start solving these problems. We need to manage our resources more rationally and collectively because otherwise it'll be day zero for all these central resources.